Hello everyone, my name is Nilesh Gajendar. Today I will be showing you how to register Cisco IP phones to a router running Call Manager Express. Before we start, I would like to show you the topology and devices we will be using today. We have two 7965 IP phones, a Catalyst 3550 PoE switch, and a 2811 series router. The two Cisco IP phones connect to the switch via pass Ethernet 0 slash 1 and 2. The switch uses its pass Ethernet 0 slash 12 to connect to the router's pass Ethernet 0 slash 0. And the router has a loopback interface. To register these two IP phones, I will be using a bottom up approach. I'm going to start by configuring the switches pass Ethernet 1 and 2. I'm going to put them in a data VLAN of 10 and a voice VLAN of 20. I will then configure the trunk port, the SVI interfaces, and the loopback interface. Finally, I'm going to set up the router as my DHCP server, the TFTP server, and my call manager. Devices running under the data VLAN of 10 would be in the network of 10.1.10 and devices under the voice VLAN of 20 would run under the network of 10.1.20. Both of these have a slash 24 subnet. The IP address of my Lubac would be 10.1.1.1. First, let's check if the phones are receiving power. The show power inline command shows us both our IP phones connected to Fastnet 1 and 2 are each receiving 12 watts of power and the maximum each of these ports can receive is 15.4 watts. Now I am going to configure Fast Ethernet 1 and 2. I am going to change the mode of the switch ports to access. I am now going to assign the data VLAN. And now the voice VLAN. I am also going to enable spanning tree port first. The show VLAN brief command shows us both fast Ethernet 1 and 2 have been assigned VLANs 10 and 20. Now let's configure the trunk interface. I'm going to first set the encapsulation to dot one q Now I'm going to configure the allowed VLANs. And now I'm going to set the switchboard to trunk. I am now going to configure the router's SVIs and the loopback.
I'm now going to configure VLAN 10's SPI with an IP address of 10.1.10.254 and VLAN 20's with 10.1.20.254. I will first configure the DHCP pool for our IP phones followed by the TFTP server. I am also going to set the default gateway for the phones to the router's IP address. And my TFTP IP address as the loopback. The show IP DHCP bindings command show both our phones have been assigned IP addresses. In order to register my phones through SCCP, I'm going to use my SCCP loads file. And I'm going to host it on my TFTP server. We enter into call manager configuration by typing in telephony service. This command tells call manager the location of the configuration files is TFTP. This command tells call manager the load files for 7965 are named as SCCP45 dot nine hyphen one hyphen one sr one s dot loads I will now specify the maximum number of e phones and the maximum number of directory numbers I would like to use This command tells call manager the maximum number of e-phones I will register will be 10. And this command tells call manager the maximum number of numbers I will use. This command defines the call manager's IP address. This command creates the configuration files.
We can now see the two phones are registered. The two phones that have just registered are looking for their XML default files. Let's take a look at what this file contains. Looking at the XML default configuration file, we see that the port used is 2000 and the IP address of the core manager is 10.1.1.1. We can also see our 7965 phone here with this load file. I am now going to register ePhone 1 with this MAC address and ePhone 2 with this MAC address. The show IP DHCP bindings command shows me the MAC addresses of both the phones. To enter into configuration of ePhone 1, I simply type ePhone 1 followed by the keyword MAC and the MAC address. The MAC command takes in a MAC address in the dotted triplet form. So I need to adjust the dots. I'm going to do the same thing for iPhone 2 now. Now I'm going to proceed to create the numbers for the phones. To create these numbers, I need to go into ePhone directory number configuration. I do that by typing in ePhone DN followed by the tag. The keyword number followed by the number. I am now going to repeat this process for the number 1002. Final step is to associate this number and this ePhone. To do that, I use the button command. Interpreting the command button 1 is to 1 can be a little tricky. The initial one stands for the line number present on your phone. The second one stands for the number 1001. Similarly, button 1 is to 2 stands for the first line with the DN2. Thus you can associate the number 1002 with ePhone 2. You can reset an IP phone by just typing the command reset. I am now going to do this for ePhone 2. And reset it. If you look at this debug, ePhone 1 and ePhone 2 have both unregistered. 
in a while they will both register both iphone 1 and iphone 2 have now registered The show ePhone register command shows us that ePhone 1 with MAC address 3CCE73ACFF22 has registered. Its IP address is 10.1.20.3. Its number is 1001. Similarly, ePhone 2 with MAC address C8F9F968EDDB has registered. Its IP address is 10.1.20.4 and its number is 1002. Now using ePhone 1, I'm going to call ePhone 2. If you noticed earlier, both ePhone 1 and ePhone 2 had their off hook and ringing states to zero. After I called and gave the command show ePhone registered, it shows off hook 1 for ePhone 1 and for ePhone phone 2 it shows ringing. Congratulations, you have registered your Cisco IP phones. Thank you.